How do you compute the surface area and volume of a 3D object, what is known as cylinder, the picture that you see right here, okay? A cylinder is different from polygons in the sense that it has no straight edge because when you look at it from the side view, whether left or right, or whether front or back, no matter which view you pick, all you see is a basically a curved surface, right? That's how a cylinder appears, right? Now, how shall we compute the surface area in this case? Because we don't have any straight edges or any rectangles or any triangles in this case. So let us do it this way. Let's say we pick any point on this cylinder, okay? And we cut a paper, paper such that it has a height exactly equal to the height of this cylinder, okay? So if H is the height of this cylinder, that is the distance from top to bottom. And then let's start wrapping this paper around this cylinder, okay? All along the boundary or on the surface of this cylinder. So in that case, what happens as you wrap this paper around, you will see that you are basically covering this cylinder on the boundary with a paper that has the dimension equal to the height equal to H, and then it has certain length to it. And the value of that length that you are wrapping this paper around this cylinder is exactly equal to the total circumference of this cylinder, right? Or in other words, if you want to visualize, let's say this is my paper, the paper that has a height H. And as you start to unwrap this paper from this cylinder, you will find it having a length. The length is equal to the total circumference around this circle, right? That's exactly what you will get as a result of unwrapping this paper that was wrapped around the cylinder, right? And what will be that length? That length will be exactly equal to the circumference or the perimeter of this circle, right? 2 pi r, where r is the radius of this cylinder or the radius of this circle, correct? So now you have two dimensions of this rectangle, the height and the length, right? So in that case, what will be the surface area of this rectangle that you have obtained? And that surface area will be equal to 2 pi r, the length, times the h. And what exactly do you call this surface area with reference to this object, the object that you have, a cylinder here, that is called the curved surface area of this cylinder. Okay, because that is the area of this curve that is around the cylinder, right? So that is your finding number one. Then what other areas still remain in this object? You can very well say that there is a circle at the top, this circle, and there is a circle at the bottom on which this cylinder is resting, right? The cylinder as we, the circle as we show here, right? So there are two circles, one at the top and one at the bottom. So those two surface areas still need to be included. And those two surface area will be simply computed as whether it is the bottom circle or whether it is the top circle. The surface area of those surfaces will be equal to pi r square, right? Where r is the radius of this cylinder or the circle that makes this cylinder, right? So now you have two different surface areas of this object. One is called the curved surface area and second is called the top and bottom face surface area, right? And the total surface area in this case will be what? The total surface area will be equal to 1 plus 2, right? That's all the surfaces are present in this cylinder and that will be equal to 2 pi r times h plus pi r square and 2 times of that, right? because there is one and then there is a second circle. Now you could simplify this a little bit further. If I apply the reverse distribution principle of multiplication, then I can take this factor 2 pi r out and what remains inside the parenthesis h plus r. And that is your expression for calculating the surface area of a cylinder, where r is the radius and h is the height of the cylinder. Okay. So now what remains is the volume computation. The volume of a cylinder will be simply equal to the 
footprint area which is pi r square which is the area of the base times the height or in other words pi r square h is the volume of this cylinder okay so these are your three findings or three computation number one is the curved surface area is equal to 2 pi r times h and the finding number two is the total surface area is equal to 2 pi r times h plus r and the third is this is second and the third is the volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r square times h okay so let's practice one problem so our given problem is that we are supposed to find the volume the curved surface area and the total surface area of a cylinder that has the base radius equal to 14 centimeter and the height 22 centimeter so this is my r the radius and this is my height in centimeter they both are in centimeter so first i'll calculate the curved surface area that will be surface area and that will be equal to 2 pi r times h right or in other words it's equal to 2 times 22 by 7 times r is 14 times h is 22 now 7 goes into 14 you get 2 here and what you get as the result is 1936 centimeter square all right then the second is my total surface area we will simply apply this formula that we just calculated here the total surface area is equal to 2 pi r times r plus h right and that is equal to 2 times i'll take the value of pi as 22 over 7 the value of r is 14 and the height is 22 but here is our r plus h now let us solve this man this 7 goes into 14 it becomes 2 so the computation of this whole thing becomes equal to 3168 centimeter square okay and finally let's calculate the volume and the volume expression is right here pi r square h that will be 22 over 7 the pi r square is 14 times 14 and h is 22 7 cancels with 14 it becomes 2 and this computation is equal to 13,552 centimeter cube. So these are our three results. But the bottom line is what are our three key points? How we obtain those results and how you imagine unfolding the surface area around a cylinder, right? And then, of course, calculating the total surface area and be able to calculate the volume. With that, let us pause here and you should practice more problems through our quiz and exam modules.